Hi, this is Tyler with After Touch Audio. Today, I'm gonna to take a break from my normal sound design videos and give you a no-nonsense guide on how to use compression. For this video, I'll mainly be using FabFilter Pro C2 because it has a very good visual representation of what's going on and I think it will be easier for you to visualize what is actually going on. But it is extremely important to know that every compressor will operate the same and at least have these controls. So it is not a requirement for you to have FabFilter Pro C2. You can just open up any stock compressor that came with your DAW and follow along just as well. Let's quickly go over what a compressor accomplishes first. Compressors are used to tame or reduce the dynamic range of an audio signal, resulting in a more consistent and comfortable sound to listen to. Or it can also be used to help knock down harsh transient information in a gunshot so you can hear the character of the gun recording. Now with that being said, if you don't understand the controls of a compressor, things can start sounding real ugly real quick. And if overused, compressors have the ability to suck the life out of just about any recording. Just remember that snares have curves. Let's quickly run over the six most common settings found on every compressor and their functions. The threshold control sets the level at which the compressor will start compressing the signal. Only when the signal passes this threshold will the audio start to compress. So, for example, if you set the compressor to minus 12, only signal peaks that go above this level will be compressed. Any sound that is quieter than this threshold will not be affected. The ratio gets a little mathy, but it's a really easy concept to grasp. Setting a ratio just tells the compressor how much of the signal you want to attenuate when it passes the threshold. A ratio of 2 to 1 will divide by half. A ratio of 4 to 1 will divide it by a quarter, and so on and so forth. If we have a setting of 8 to 1 and our signal goes above the threshold by 8 dB, we'll see 1 dB on the output. If our signal goes over the threshold by 4 dB, we'll see about a half a dB on the output. And if our signal goes over by 1 dB, we'll only see an eighth of a dB on the output. But enough of this complicated math stuff. What is this, school? Ratios might seem complicated to grasp, but you can think about it like this way. A 2 to 1 is considered a very gentle compression. A ratio of 3 to 4 to 1 is considered a moderate compression. 5 to 7 to 1 is considered medium compression. 8 and beyond is considered very strong compression, and 20 to 1 is acting more as a limiter ensuring that absolutely nothing exceeds the threshold that is set. Adjusting the attack parameter lets the compressor know how fast you want the compressor to clamp down on the sound. Dragon Ball Z punch speeds, or your local DMV speeds. Ah. Setting the compressor to a fast attack will cause the compressor to clamp down as soon as the signal passes the predetermined threshold. Setting the compressor to a slower attack will slowly let the transient through and tends to sound more natural. Faster attacks work really well on sounds with a lot of transient information like gunshots or footsteps, where a medium to slow attack can help smoothen out a dialogue track, or it can also make sure that your drum kit punches through your mix by not clamping down on your powerful snare. Keep in mind that a faster attack can cause some distortion depending on which part of the frequency spectrum that you're compressing. Most of the time this won't be a factor, but if you're getting some pops or clicks while using your compressor, try increasing the attack time until the unwanted sounds or pops go away. The release control adjusts the time it takes for your signal to go from compressed to not compressed. To keep things sounding natural, you really want to set this release as short as possible without getting a pumping effect. Think of the knee as how fast or soft the compressor transitions from not compressing to compressing. You can usually find this control on a compressor as a toggle switch for soft knee or hard knee, where some compressors like Pro C2 allow you to adjust the hardness or softness of the knee. A softer knee will transition more gradually as the signal approaches the threshold, where a harder knee will transition instantly. Once you have successfully compressed your signal, you will notice the signal is a lot quieter than your original signal. The goal with makeup gain is to roughly match the level of the original signal that we applied compression to. You can double check this by clicking the bypass button and raising or lowering the gain until you have roughly the same level. Now that we know all the common settings found on a compressor, let's go over some quick tips before we complete this video. Make sure that your levels are as close as possible to your desired levels before applying compression, as you might end up over compressing sounds that don't need to be compressed. Like with any processing, I try to do as little compression as possible. Compression has a nasty habit that can quickly destroy a sound if overdone, and if you're looking for a more natural sound, is it important to apply small amounts of compression as you go, rather than applying more extreme settings all at once. Try starting small and make sure to bypass and unbypass your compression to make sure what you are applying is a positive change. This concludes my no-nonsense guide to compression. I would like to take a quick second to thank everyone that supports me out on Patreon. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you liked the video, please consider smashing the like and subscribe button. Now go make some noise!